Listeners be advised, the Holiloquy podcast discuss matters related to the human experience and many that are sexual in nature. Due to this, some conversations may surround triggering topics such as sexual violence, self-harm, abuse, and much more. Please be advised, a list of crisis and psychological resources will be available in the show notes of this episode. With that said, let's get started with the show. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention please as we go through the following safety instructions. In the event that there is a loss of cabin pressure, oxygen mask will drop from the overhead. Place the mask over your nose and mouth. Breathe normally as oxygen is flowing even if the mask is not exposed. Be sure to adjust your own mask before helping others. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the Holy Liquid Podcast, where we step out and speak on sexuality. This is your favorite host, Fernand T. Scott, also known as Slater Jackson, and for you freaking motherfuckers out there, Sebastian Adams. On today's episode, we are mixing things up. We're talking about one-night stands, as well as sending news. Sometimes you do that right before your one-night stand. Sometimes you do it afterwards because, hey, I want you to remind, I just want to send a reminder, come back. It was good, okay? Just come on back. <laughs> And with me, I am blessed to have Ann Bell. How are you doing today? I'm good. Doing good, Vernon. How you doing? I'm doing great. So this is your first time on the Holy Liquid Podcast. Do you mind letting people know what you do, what you're about, all the great things about Ann Bell? What makes you unique? It is the <laughs> first day of class. What's up? <laughs> first, I have to ask you, have you ever thought of being with that voice, a phone sex operator? So let me go ahead and give you the uh, actual answer to that. Yes, I have. (laughs) (laughs) I have thought about doing it, but I I can't say I haven't because I do have a Night Flirts account. It's just that I... I don't know. It's it's a mental block. I need to like break it down a little bit and then I'll be more comfortable with doing it because... I don't know. I, I really want to do like sex stories and read those for people and mm-hmm. just add my own ad libs. I actually applied for a position for it and they were just like, no, but I should do it again. It was with Dipsy. Um, um, what is I, 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 I post, I put their things in the show notes, but Dipsy has like audio recordings of people reading, um, books well reading like paragraphs and adding their own sexual sounds to it and I was like oh this sounds amazing let me try to do this I made it to round two so I feel proud of myself for that uh I I think I was too focused on acting and not enough on feeling um during the second round so all right so now you know well it's funny when I went to massage school in 1997 they, you know, I had to go to school, um, work part time mm-hmm. and I did apply to be a phone sex operator. That's Ooh. way back in the day when it was the 900 number, you know, they called. And it was interesting because I went to apply and it's this it was this building with all cubicles. Mm-hmm. And there were five stages from uh, what they call it, uh, cherry, you know, the vanilla side all the way to hardcore BDSM. And I could go one to four, but the fifth stage I was not comfortable with way back then. And they're like, I says, but I can do one to four. They had them all labeled. And they're like, no, everybody has to do up to five, you know, the hard stuff too. I'm like, okay. Um, But that's my story as a phone sex operator. I think I would have really enjoyed it. One woman had props, scripts. I mean, she Ooh. really got into it. It was really, really cool. Yeah, to see her. Oh, um, yes. It's uh, it, that's it's an interesting, you know, occupation. But I kind of wish I had done it a little bit because I think it would be kind of cool, actually. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I still think about uh, going back to Night Flirt, and I, I really they have a sex. Uh, option too uh but my only thing is i don't know if that requires sending like news and stuff like that because if if it is i'm like "Mm, 
Mm. No, this was strictly over the phone. There was none of that. All it was was talking. And yeah, you there was they were very specific on what you can and cannot do. Yeah. So it was interesting. But I'm sorry, I got us off track. So okay. what I I am a love and sex coach. Um, as I said previously, I've been a licensed massage therapist for 26 years. And I talk to people on the table. So they always want to tell me a lot of things. And I just felt that the need for a safe space for people to talk whatever they want to talk about. um, And I provided that. So then I decided in 2012 to go for life coaching. And then when the pandemic hit in 2020, I went for love, sex and relationship coaching. And uh, I really, really enjoy it, you know, because I mainly work with women right now. So I really believe that, you know, women's needs matter and they forget them. And I'm here to remind them that they do matter and that they deserve to have a beautiful, fulfilling, enjoyable sex life. <laughs> mm, amen. I, I, I'm glad that you actually men- mentioned that because there's, I've come across uh, many women who will set their own personal pleasure aside in order to uh, please their partner. And I think uh, I've, I've met some uh, queer folk as well uh, who do fall within that category too, but I've it's been a lot of women, uh, uh, a huge amount of women who just um, it's like, oh, I need to make sure he's taken care of or mm-hmm. this, that, and third. But what's, what's happening on the other end of that? Like, are you feeling fulfilled? Are you feel, feeling pleased? Are you really enjoying the sex that you're having with this person? like you're dedicating so much of yourself to make sure that this person's happy but how much are they dedicating back to you right but I think women are raised that way we're raised to be nurturers and caretakers put everybody else before ourselves you know we're also given the mixed message of don't be too sexual don't be a prude you know just be this little straight lacy thing be enough just flirty to get your man Mm -hmm. and don't be too sexual with him you know so we've got all these messages going on in our head what we're supposed to be doing and what we really need to be doing is finding our own pleasure within ourselves first know we're capable of it because that's the other misnomer we do we let our men give us pleasure and we're afraid to give direction so we kind of fake it a little bit Mm -hmm. and we kind of go okay huh that's good that's good you know i'm uh, that's enough for me let me do you let me take care of you so there are many men though that are insistent about pleasing their person but the women don't know what that is truthfully. So here's a stat for you that I found really astounding because we all think we're having, um, you know, and I'm talking about hetero male and females, uh, penis and vagina sex. We all think it lasts forever. The average is 5.2 to 5.7 minutes. And it takes a woman 20 to 30 minutes to orgasm. Mm. Do the math. (laughs) It's not short sighted <laughs> <laughs> by a lot. <laughs> you know, because also we see we also think there's something wrong with us because we see these Hollywood movies. Instantly the woman is moaning and orgasming, and you know, it, it, this is how it's supposed to go. And and women are saying, but I'm not doing that. That's not happening for me. Because that's not how it works. Mm-hmm. That that's all fake. It's oh, all child. just mixed, terrible messages we're giving, and we just don't know. So there's so many uh, stereotypes and misinformation that we have to weed through to get where we're going. So hopefully that's what, you know, my next journey, my next phase of my journey is going to be. See, uh, I, I'm going to refuse jumping on, uh, like jump, jumping out there to talk about the fakeness of porn because, oh my God, I can just, uh, can do so many damn episodes about that. <laughs> like, so you got to read this book, his, his porn. porn, her pain. Oh God, by Marty yes. Klein, and I'm. It's very, very interesting. This book on porn, his viewpoint. Mm-hmm. And how he thinks about porn, um, because women think that the man's porn is ruining their 
sex life. Mm -hmm. And it really is not because it's fantasy. Porn is not educational, as we know. Mm -hmm. Our younger generation thinks it is. So they're trying to copy that. And they're being unsuccessful and don't understand why, because mm. that's where they're learning sex from is porn. And they don't realize porn is scripted. Porn is maneuvered. You know, they take forever. Get this shot. It's not natural. Porn it's is not, not natural. <laughs> it's far from it. And this is like, I, I enjoy amateur porn for that. Uh, reason because it it's a little bit more natural but it's still phony uh, because uh, when it comes to amateur porn a lot of people well from uh, the content creators I've seen are trying to finesse and have sex with the camera rather than actually enjoying the experience and not understanding how that has a different take for someone to enjoy uh because you don't have you're not worried about you know the product the production value you're actually watching the amateur things because it's like oh i get the uh, angle that i don't usually get when i watch the uh higher production uh, value things i don't i have less distractions I, it might be a song in the background that i recognize because of you know the media that they're in or the spaces that they're in and it's just like you don't get that same quality in like uh, a high value quality production porn you just don't get it and that's the great thing about it um but it's just they're still trying to emulate that that the the um uh, hollywood version of sex and it's just like ugh, i agree I with you I, when they're when they're busy looking at the camera i turn that off immediately i'm like i don't want you watching the camera i don't need you know that does nothing for me um but that's why I like amateur porn because you can find some of those. Mm -hmm. But the, you know, it's fantasy. Yes. You know, it's people don't realize that it's fantasy. It's our imagination. This is what we like. It gets our motor running. Doesn't mean your partner is going to expect you to look like that and act like that. If they are, they're really an asshole. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> that part. <laughs> You know, this is this is just fantasy for them. I mean, when I'm self-pleasuring, I'll go to porn because you know what? I can get it done if I'm in a hurry. You know, I'm getting it done mm -hmm. in two or three minutes. That's, uh, you know, that's just how it is because, you know, that's what you're, I want it to be that because I want to go to sleep, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's other times it can be different, but it also... It helped me identify some of my turn-ons. You know, that's what I found very interesting about porn was, oh, I like this. I want to try this. Oh, no, I'm a voyeur. I just want to see this. Mm. I don't want to do it. Mm. You know, and certain sounds, like I'm a sound girl, so I like hearing certain sounds during sex. And I'm like, oh, isn't that interesting? You know, so you do find some of your fetishes, erogenous zones, turn-ons. You know, if you're if you're looking for that, that's a place to start for some of it. Yes. Gotcha. See, ah, porn, porn, porn. <laughs> <laughs> so to switch up and dive into this conversation, let's start off with some one night stands. So Ooh. in our intake meeting, we were just uh, talking about some of the stigmas that uh, we had. Well, not us, but some of the stigmas that is currently present as it relates to one night stands, meaning um, you some people may see you as being less than a person because you choose to have casual sex and all of these things. What are some st stigmas that you've um, come across uh, throughout your life? Well, what do they call it? The walk of shame. Mm, mm. <laughs> I am not ashamed of what I just did. Most definitely it was good, Lord. <laughs> it's like, here I am, strutting it home. <laughs> <laughs> but you know i there are there's you know if women do it we're whores and sluts the holiloquy podcast focuses on the variability of sexual expression when it comes to sexual expression we often depend on pornography to illustrate how one must perform sexually 
For those who have not learned this by now, the stuff you see in porn is not real. Pornography provides a singular perspective of sexual expression that is not often the reality we see during our own sexual encounters. The Holiloquy Podcast is a conversation that takes you outside of the compressed box of what many know about sex. Some of the topics we discuss include kinks, condom usage, status disclosure, and past sexual experiences. The Holiloquy Podcast steps out on sexual norms and recognizes that the norm is not the only normal. Subscribe today and join the conversation. There are, there's, you know, if women do it, we're whores and sluts, you know, we're whores and sluts, we're labeled, we're less than, we're not, we feel we're not going to get a partner, you know, we're damaged goods, um, you know, so all kinds of crazy nonsense that's out there. But, you know, for men, they're revered, they're studly, you know, it's a notch on their belt, so I just find the comparison a little um, off-putting. No, I agree with you. I I truly agree. I will. The thing that really bothered me, uh, like as a young age throughout most of my uh, adult life as well, is just that double standard um, place between you know men and women. Because I'm just like, why? I would never understand why we're expected to have sex with multiple women, but at the same time, those same women we have to demean because we're having sex with them. And I'm just like, this just is this is a cyclical loop that just goes nowhere because at the end of the day, somebody's feeling shame because they're doing something that's completely natural and normal and okay to be doing. Like, why? <laughs> why are we in this place as a society where we're telling people like, oh, make sure you go out there and get the, all the practices that you want because these women are for you to you know use however you want but at the same time women don't you dare open up your legs who are we supposed to be fucking in this moment <laughs> well i love the thing of a like you're a good girl oh do you many times i heard you're a good girl oh you're a good girl <laughs> okay i'm a good girl <laughs> I'm a whore, okay? <laughs> it's pr- a proud whore. <laughs> if you want to, I'm going to discourage you from that. Okay. <laughs> that always just made me laugh. Oh, am I? <laughs> Look, well, what is it? They want a lady on their what, a lady on their arm. A free, what's the song by Usher? Lady oh, in the uh, bed and a freak in the sheets. Uh, lady in the <clears throat> streets and a freak in the bed. Yes, there you go. <laughs> um, that's what that's what men, you know, that's what they want. But then, if you're too slutty in bed, they're where'd you learn that? How'd you get there? You know. <laughs> now, they're, now they're feeling inadequate, and it's just like. <sighs> You brought me over here to do whole shit. And when I begin to do the whole shit, now you're scared. Why did you invite me over? You should have said, hey, I want to come up. I want you to come over so we can cuddle, possibly do missionary. And then we go about our lives. Okay, cool. I'm comfortable with that. No, you said uh, you want me to come over so we can fuck with all the flag at the back of that. And I came over here. <laughs> I have yet to meet a man that can cuddle. Strictly cuddle. I have oh, yet to meet a man cuddle. that can strictly cuddle. That leads to nothing. <laughs> I, I, I have hope every single time. And it goes down the drain. Oh, my quickly. God. <laughs> like, I've gotten to the point where when someone's like, oh, I would love to cuddle with you. You look cuddly and everything. I'm like, okay, define cuddle, okay? <laughs> your pants are off i'm like how did i get like this this is not cuddling <laughs> like i'm a i will always tell people you have to tell me what to expect because if it's not on the menu then it's just not going to be on the menu I, I didn't go to the grocery store i didn't pick it up how dare you like ask you ask for fish and now you're asking for chicken <laughs> what are we doing here i came here for with the fish <laughs> it's so true (laughs) but you know i look at i looked at one night stands as man practice Mm. i was coming off of you know i was a widow at a young age of 29 so i was starting to heal and i had been married 
It was the second man I'd ever been with in my life. And the sex was not good. So I was not going to get back into that situation. I didn't know what situation I wanted to be in. So I had to practice. Mm. (laughs) Mm. I I had to hone my skills again, my flirting skills, my, you know, and I didn't want a relationship at that point. I wanted to play. I wanted to flirt. I wanted to learn what that was all about. I was an extremely overweight woman. I had lost a lot of weight. I was feeling my hotness and I was like, fuck it. I want to have some fun. As you should. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) So I played. I was like, oh, man practice, you know. And that's what it came down to at times. You know, a a man would walk into the bar and I'd be, I'd say to my girlfriends, oh, I'm taking him home tonight. Yes. They're like, how do you you do that? I'm like, I don't know. I just feel it. I just, like, they would walk in the room. I'm like, oh, that one's mine. Mm. (laughs) I love it. I love it. I love it. I need to get, I need to step my game up. Um, but I, <laughs> I agree 100% because like, I, I just call it experience points when it, like, I don't care about body count. I care about my experience points because yes, it's like, I love that. <laughs> it's like, I'm uh, learning more about myself. The more that I engage in terms of like for my own personal pleasure uh of course i uh, you know masturbate and all these other things self-pleasure is important people make sure you please yourself ding, so ding 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 it's like <laughs> i use uh, my experiences with other people to help me with having those conversations about what i do want in bed as well uh and even helps helps me weed out the people that i don't need to be in bed with um like if they're unable to carry mm-hmm. a conversation i probably shouldn't mm-hmm. be out here uh, fooling around with this person if <laughs> their uh only intentions is to fuck i'm like okay cool <laughs> i know when to contact you when i'm extremely horny and horniness is a drug <laughs> so, <laughs> whenever i'm trying to get high <laughs> so when i'm in that mood okay let me hit this person up because i know that they'll be ready to go so mm-hmm. they're ready to go and great um if if it's somebody who's this is kind of related to this episode. Somebody who's only thirsting over my news, I know that, oh, they're just trying to jack off and they're not really trying to experience my body. So why not? Well, I'm not going to share it with you. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it's like those kind of things. And you get that that kind of knowledge by engaging with people, be it with one night stands, be it with casual dating, all of those. Like, it's so much. It's so much. It's Remember, it's experience points, people. Fuck yes. the count. <laughs> and you know what? It's it's a phase. Like for me, it was a phase. Mm-hmm. It was something I had to go through. It was something, all of the things you just listed, I needed to know about myself. I need to know about my skills. <laughs> Excuse me. What I was good at, what I liked, what I didn't like. Um, you know, all of that. That really, but then it then it ended mm-hmm. too. It was like, okay, I have this information and I'm done with this phase because it served its purpose and I want something different for myself. Mm. Doesn't mean that's the way it does happens for everybody, though. It just means for me, that's what ha- was the next stage. Yeah, I'm glad that you shared that because there are so many people who's just like, oh, I need to have a whole phase. If it's, if it's not in you, if the spirit is telling you not to have a whole phase, <laughs> do not have a whole phase. It's not for everybody. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> if you're one of those people who are quick to attach to somebody, yeah, doing that is just not going to be for you. Um, casual conversations with other people to build up your communication skills, probably. But sharing your body with multiple people is just not going to be for you. It's not It's not in the cards. The spirit said, no, sit your ass down. Like, right. <laughs> just understand, like, everybody's phases, everybody's experiences is going to be different. Um, and I, uh, I know, like, with... a many young people because of how the narratives around sex is um, portrayed they think that the whole phase is a a necessary thing that is something that they truly need in order to go to their next level or their next lived experience no sometimes you just need to sit down reflect on your life go to therapy because therapy is always great and then if it's 
there for you if it's meant for you you will have one but not i just wanted to put that out there because some people <clears throat> just automatically think oh it's time for me to go ho because this uh, happened i just had heartbreak let me go ahead and you know have my whole face no don't don't ho out here with a broken heart <laughs> please don't <laughs> please do not do that <laughs> In the club, that's what we used to say. When somebody new walked in, we're like, oh, look, new meat, new meat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, what's your story? Oh, recently divorced. And I'm like, oh, here it comes. <laughs> mm, that. <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know i looked it up and there was a, there's a statistic a study that 27 percent of one night stands lead to long-term relationships really yes oh well look at that that's 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 actually pretty that's bare odds than i actually thought i know so. i actually had a friend who got married from one <laughs> look let me go ahead and find let me stop <laughs> <laughs> yeah they've been married I don't know, 20 some years by now. Yeah. Oh. So there is the, you know, there is this percentage that it does work out. It's a small percentage. I wouldn't bank the, you know, put my money in the bank over it. Right. But, you know, if you have, if you know the purpose, if you know why you're doing it, or if you're in it and it's like, why am I doing it? Stop and ask yourself, take a pause. What is the purpose of this? And I'm glad you mentioned therapy earlier because that's how I knew what I was doing because I was in therapy at the time. And mm. my therapist told me what I was doing was I was experiencing my teenage rebellion years. And because I was in my 40s, I was more adventurous than I probably would have been at my teenage years about it. Mm. So that's what I was going through. <clears throat> oh, look at that. That's interesting. Mm. I wonder what phase I'm in now. I'm joking. I, I kind of know <laughs> I, I'm uh, slowly exiting my whole phase while uh, having a perpetual state of burn your hoe is okay except that <laughs> so. well and that's you know here's the other thing to sit and talk about this mm -hmm. i'm comfortable with it you know maybe two years five years ago my my girlfriends knew but not my fam i didn't tell many people just my small circle that was in it with me but i think it's so important to share to let people know it's okay mm-hmm you know, it's part of a process. Know what your process is. If you don't, seek out. Ask somebody mm. who can help you, you know, get through it. And that brings up the next thing that uh, we're going to talk about, which is the importance of knowing who you are, knowing yourself. Uh, and like the, like, experiencing a whole phase does help you know know yourself but going to therapy helps you know yourself um communicating with your friends family knowing your roots all these things are um uh, pivotal things when it comes to identifying and knowing exactly who you are um most definitely when it comes to like who you are as a sexual being i personally feel as though that truly does start with the self uh, within that sexual explore that self exploration of your body knowing what um, feels good to you what uh, helps you feel comfortable what helps you feel relaxed so that you're able to articulate that to any partners that you may have or even if it's something casual you can just blatantly let somebody know hey I um, we're here this is something um, that I do enjoy. I need, you know, a little bit of um, oral be to get me, you know, warmed up or even um, like digital play or anything like that. Or I enjoy watching um, porn while engaged in sex. It's, is that something that will make you uncomfortable? Is that something that you are okay with? Um, you know, having those kind of conversations and stuff. Right. And all of what you said and I would add <clears throat> solitude. Mm. When you're going through certain phases, it's important to spend some time by yourself and ask those questions. Uh, can you spend time by yourself? Are you comfortable with spending some time by yourself and getting to know yourself? Because mm. that's where power and strength comes from. When you can heal past traumas, inner critic, inner child, recognize all of those things that are happening for you and heal them, start to heal them. 
And we also heal them in relationship. Mm. So the, I think there's a certain level of knowing yourself. And then there's a certain level if you want to go beyond, you have to do that in partnership. Mm. And it doesn't always mean romantic, though romantic partnerships will excel your growth. Even one night stands excelled my growth because I found so much information from them. Mm -hmm. So it's imp it's important to be able to do all of those things. And um, <clears throat> when you mentioned um, like expanding your growth through partnership, it made me think about my current situation. Um, and I've seen a difference in how I've been interacting, not necessarily with other people, but with that specific person, um, because, <clears throat> you know, after years of, you know, fuck boys and all the like foolishness that you come accustomed to on these streets, um, you tend to like become, I would say slightly, well, a little jaded. And you also just, um, I, well, I personally became comfortable with just accepting, okay, this is just how this person is, whatever. I don't have to <clears throat> focus on this anymore. It is what it is. Maybe something may happen. Maybe something won't. I'm not going to like really in, uh, like engage it. So I personally disengage from whatever that could have been or whatever the situation was. But I chose to be patient with this um, person I'm talking to now. And I have uh, chose to like, not listen to the old thought processes that I had and just try to be a lot more patient, a lot more understanding. And I'm already a, a very patient person. So when I say a lot more patient, I mean like, <laughs> well, well, a lot more patience. Um, but being more patient, uh, allowing space and time uh, for like the rift in the communication and not taking any offense by you know a response taking a week or so or anything like that and not feeling highly upset or uh, even disturbed by um, lack of communication I would say that would be the best way to phrase it but um, just it's, it's just something completely new by because I'm allowing my, allowing myself just not to stay rooted in that past experience with other people and just seeing things at face value with this individual as an individual alone and not necessarily as a makeup of all the past failures or the uh, former partners or the friends that didn't stay and all of that. So um, I will say just engaging with people are uh, actively changing um, the way that I am within relationships, be it friendship, part uh, romantic. Uh, I I really have been learning a lot more about myself um, just within that current, this current um, thing that I have with this person that has no title, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I find that very interesting because you and I are probably in the same phase right now where I got tired of my own behaviors. I got tired of doing the same thing and getting the same results. So I had to look in the mirror really deep and really hard and go, what's my part in this? Because, you know, it's not them. They're mm -hmm. mirrors to us. It's really about us. Mm -hmm. And when you've had enough, you've had enough. And I think it's learning new skills. I, you know, I got asked the other day, what was the best um, part of becoming a love coach? And I said, I had to learn my own behaviors and clean up my own shit. <laughs> <laughs> I benefited the most from my own learning. Mm. And I'm now putting that into action because of past relationships, past traumas, childhood traumas, you know, I'm trying to stay very present and watch myself. And it's excruciating sometimes, like I can see the fear, I can see me wanting to go, no, no, this, this is not, he's taking this, he's taking too long, or mm -hmm. he disappeared, or he's not responding. And I'm like, nope, we're going to take our time. We're going to let this unfold. And we're not going to be in that rush that I'm normally in mm, exactly. and, and rush the process. And this, like when I said spending time alone, I've spent a lot of time on my own during the pandemic 
um, you know, because of business and, you know, changing friendships, change people coming and going. But as you grow, that's a natural process that uh, relationships of any kind are going to shift and change and know that that's natural and normal. There's nothing wrong with you. As you grow as a person, you're going to want different people. You're going to another level. And some friendships might go in a different category. Doesn't mean you're not going to be friends. Mm. It's just your friends on a different level. Um, you're preparing for something different, magnificent to come into your life. But I will tell you, I have to stand very still and watch my fear, watch what's happening, all the old patterns that are here. And I'm like, oh my God, this is excruciating. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> But here's the thing. I feel when why I'm doing this, this is going to make me a better coach. This is going to help me help people because I know what this is like. I know how hard this transition is to make and I can sympathize and empathize and guide and steer a little bit differently now because I've walked I'm walking my talk. Mm. That part. And that was that's what will happen with your people too. Yes, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's it's been very interesting, and I've I've been enjoying the ride honestly. And just I know I just decided let me just take my thinking brain away, even though it's hard. You know that ADHD does whatever the fuck it wants, regardless. But I've decided to not focus so heavily on like the what ifs and just ride it through um uh, it's like if, a, if if a plan cancel a plan cancels it, it is okay <laughs> there's no reason behind it i'm not going to create a reason if a reason is not provided I, it's just it's okay um do i overthink sometimes yes but it's usually not in regards to like what the future may be or what um things how this is going to develop or anything like that it's usually about travel stuff <laughs> like some relevant things that uh, cause me to overthink but it's just a new level of comfort so i i've been appreciating and just feeling grateful for that mm -hmm. um another well just a switch to well, and, and mm -hmm. just one more comment on this topic is boundaries this is where i have healthier boundaries Mm. And I know the difference now, what, what is, what they are and what, how I can enforce them. Mm. Boundaries is always important. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> um, so speaking of, um, we, we learned in our intake meeting for this episode, we we're both not a fan of sending news, <laughs> 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 which is like a boundary. Granted, um, it just depends. Uh, if if the person appreciates the news, then yes. If the person sexualizes my news, then no. Like I, <laughs> I get people look at the news because they want want. And want that desire or they want they um wish to sexualize the person that is sending them it's just i don't i don't want uh -uh, i just want my nudes to be appreciated <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing when you send them you have no idea what they're doing with them that is true you you don't know it's like a gift you're given a gift you're not you know you can't control the gift that, is that true. you're giving so I don't give those gifts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't want my whatever out there because, you know, and then there's revenge and then there's, you know, you just don't know, especially early stages of what a person is thinking and capable of, you know, so I just now we talked about I like boudoir because mm. I think it's tasteful. Yes. You know, not everything is all out there. Usually it's very seductive. Mm. So I will share those photos because one, I'm very proud of them and I look kind of hot in them. And if they slip them out, hey, look at me, you know, yes. So that's so an alternative to nudes. 
I yeah, I'm all here for the boudoir. Like if for anybody who does not follow me on my uh Instagram page, it's like just follow me, you'll see them. They're right at the top. <laughs> like if you want to see what I look like nude, there you go. Enjoy. It was a beautiful moment and I looked very, very great. And I still look just as great. <laughs> uh, just less makeup. <laughs> <laughs> but like I'm such a huge fan of boudoir photos because it, it's it's very central, it's sexy, it's mm -hmm. um enticing to look at. But whenever I think of like just a nude photo, there's no artistry to them for the most part. It's just okay, here's my body, I'm sending it to you. Like <laughs> Give me some flair. Give me some painting. Give me something to make me excited to like receive these photos. Right. Like uh, even when it comes to people that I want to hook up with or uh, people, even the uh, person I'm talking to, I, I don't care for them to send like a nude photo to me. Uh, a, a face pic is great enough for me. Yes. Um, um, if 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 they were to like do a boudoir shoot and send that to me i would just be like oh my fucking goodness yes like i'm more turned on by somebody in clothing than i am with them being just completely nude because yes. you can be so artsy with the things that you wear and how you wear it and how you position yourself is just great yes nude photos makes a statement as well but it's just how you dress it <laughs> that's the thing do any dick pics i get you know i, I now i just say uh, don't send me i don't i don't want your dick don't send me your dick because I, I just i don't need it you know then i'll usually send one back <laughs> <laughs> what the hell <laughs> since we're sending dicks <laughs> yeah. here here's one for you dude <laughs> They're I like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think mine you. is bigger. <laughs> I told you I didn't want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, to this day, I still don't understand why so many people still sends, send me dick pics, even though I, like, I have it on a profile. Don't send me news. Like, what are they going to do? Like, <laughs> sending me a nude photo does not mean I want to have sex with you a lot sooner. It actually means I might want to keep my way, my distance from you because yeah. what is a nude photo without a face? What is a yeah, nude photo you're, without you're, a character? You're leading with your dick. Okay. Where, you know, to me, to be turned on, it's my mind. You know, I'm like, mm. fuck my mind, my first, my body will follow. Mm. So when that you're part. sending your dick pic, that it's like, oh, God, where did the chemistry, where did the fun go? Where did the charisma you know it's like deflating the balloon before mm. you give it <laughs> like I, I i don't know what you thought was going to happen here <laughs> i really don't <laughs> my favorite is when someone uh unsolicitedly sends me a dick pic and then they're at they ask me to send them a nude photo and i'm like why would i do that <laughs> would i just send you something but did i ask for it <laughs> And there's the other thing, consent. You know, it's really not consensual. That when part. somebody says don't do it and you're doing it, so what else are you not going to listen to me about? Exactly. What else are you going to break consensually? If you're doing that right now before we meet, what else aren't you going to follow through with? I mean, it's it's an indicator. Exactly. Pay attention. Pay attention. pay attention really pay attention like um there was somebody who sent me um dick pics today actually and <laughs> i was just like oh okay uh what am i supposed to do with this like like what did i, I just sent them a message are you going to send me a face picture like what's what's going on here <laughs> like, <laughs> what's, what's the expectation here because um, this does not make me want to hook up with you I do not find this sexy I just do not <laughs> I'm sorry but <laughs> where's your smile <laughs> right turn me on some other kind of way <laughs> like I'm at work for one so that means I definitely can't look at the dick pic so like what are we doing here <laughs> yes <laughs> 
and maybe I'm just old. It's not my generation. I don't know. But and then there, there can be such severe consequences. And you hear it all the time for the young ones that are doing it, mm. you know, and then my ex-boyfriend sent my picture all around to everybody in school. Don't, you know, and I get it. They have peer pressure. You know, it's it's so hard being a young person today, but yeah. don't do it. Don't just do say it. no. It's, it's not worth it. It's really no. not. If if you're uncomfortable with sending it, and even if you are comfortable, still don't send it. <laughs> like, I have, I don't know how many people I've had to tell online. If uh, if I have to, if you message me because you found me attractive already, just by face value alone. If I have to validate your attraction to me by sending a new picture, that means you're truly not attracted to me. Therefore, I don't want to fuck you. I don't want to have sex with you. I don't want you in my presence because why do I have to validate my sex in this by giving off my nude body? Mm -hmm. I already came to this function sexy as fuck. Right. It's too late. <laughs> so, you missed me. <laughs> Strip. <laughs> like, I don't for those it's just, it's just sexual to me it's like there's no zero interest in me you know it's all about you mm -hmm. you know you just want to get this thing out and about uh, you know I don't know what your issue is but no thank you I'm good on that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on that note are you ready for a little never have I ever oh yeah all righty. So uh, I might, I'm going to do a never have I ever and also a would you rather. And if we have some time, I might throw in a sex question. So never have I ever made someone orgasm while they were fully clothed. Uh, oh, you know, I, I'm confused with this game. Never have I ever. I have you ever made anybody? <laughs> yes. Oh, you have. <laughs> <laughs> I am intrigued. <laughs> I have not yet, but I do plan on doing something of that sort with that person I was referring to earlier. Ooh. So my goal is before we even ever engage in like penetrative sex is to have uh, a, um, like get this person to orgasm in at least four to five different ways. Oh, that that's so, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> that's the goal i might i might steal that one hmm. Hmm. <laughs> let me know how that goes for you <laughs> i'll keep you up to date on my end um, okay <laughs> <laughs> and uh he listens to this podcast so well there you go this episode is coming out like oh damn this comes out <laughs> right after his birthday too <laughs> I'm definitely going to be like, hey, uh, I know there's another episode that I told you about, but it, this is not that one, but I talked about you on this episode. You should listen to that and also send me a face picture. Uh <laughs> That's your gorgeous. Um, but yeah, so you have, what was that like? Powerful. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty powerful. You're like in control. You're like, you know, it's really interesting. Yes. Goals. Goals. <laughs> so audience, if y'all have not made somebody orgasm with um, being fully clothed, give it a try. See what you can do. <laughs> Finesse some shit with your partner or your one night stand if they're into it. 27%. Mm. <laughs> your eyes are in your favor somehow. It's low, but <laughs> it's a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> oh god so would you rather date someone much much more attractive than you or date someone slightly less attractive hmm i feel some type of about this question because i'm beautiful as fuck already <laughs> like, uh, yeah i mean like how do you determine that right because i feel like if if regardless of where i feel fit on here they're dating me and i'm attracted to them right so it's okay. to, to me it's energy i've dated so many different types of people that I, it's more energy i feel like woof, you know mm -hmm. i guess this is for those people because you know um 
I don't know if you if you've experienced this or, or experienced this or overheard conversations where they're just like, "Oh, how did this person get that person?" Yeah, I guess that's the ideal of this question. But they got that person because they're not uh, superficial. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> when you're looking for love, you find love. If you're yes. looking for looks, you find looks. So understand your priorities in this like yeah i yes i yeah we're going to act like we didn't have that conversation (laughs) (laughs) oh god okay here we go so would you rather your partner insist on wearing an animal costume during sex or have them insist on you wearing the costume him really him why let's talk yes! about this because yes. <laughs> the excitement that i'm here right now and seeing from you i'm hella intrigued yes let's I, go want, this. I want a human puppy you know do you ever see Ooh, puppy play yes puppy yes. play is so cute i want a human puppy <laughs> support i i support my um ex um <laughs> he was uh he's a furry uh he didn't we never like experienced any kind of uh furry play or anything like that but there was a moment where i did get him because his identity is a cat um so i did get him some cat ears and that was amazing uh it looked good on him and everything it was it was it was a it was a good time it was a very mm-hmm. good time um yeah, so some of them some of them really get really into it i mean they're it's really kind of cool it's even like um pony play Mm. oh my god those i've seen pony play Uh, i don't want a pony but it's the the owner and the pony oh that is like so hot watching some of them interact yeah Mm. i don't know i kind of i kind of like that stuff yeah like i well for for me with this question, this is one of those where I have to say both because I'm comfortable with um, dressing up uh, in whatever animal costume my partner wants me to be in. <laughs> Let me know. Be- <laughs> if you try to get a hippo, bitch, I will be a hippo. Uh, I will say my own. <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> my partner has a hippo lord um a sexy ass hippo too you know i have i'm going to have to post this on uh, on my instagram page but there's this photo because people keep asking me for news you know the hippo from um madagascar oh i didn't watch it no oh it's fine there's this uh, so the hippo on there someone made a. Uh, uh image of her and they added like huge breasts to her body so i um (laughs) used that on my profile saying don't ask me for news this is what i look like and it's just that (laughs) (laughs) that's a good one so i'm definitely bitch i'm a hippo and that's going to be the name of this episode um, <laughs> bitch, <I'm a> hippo. <laughs> but uh i, I think I, if i were to choose an animal it would have to be a fox mm. um my favorite animal is a turtle and penguin but i would have to say for like sex appeal it'll have to be it have to be a fox a silver fox at that Ooh, okay. yeah <laughs> so um and i would I, I would definitely be comfortable with um that person who shall not be named on this episode to like <laughs> dress up in a costume it is okay i'm very comfortable with that <laughs> oh my god all the sub tweeting I'm, I'm i'm here for it um so would you like a sex question now sure so do you have a safe word have you ever used it and tell me more Yes, yes, Ooh, yes. What is this safe word? Um, I think one time it was orange. You know, you want your safe words not to be, you know, so it can be red, mm-hmm. but not stop. Don't use stop as your safe word, people, because, no. you know, it's not, It's you'll go, stop, stop, oh, please don't stop. They don't know what you mean. Mm. It's confusing. So pick a word that you wouldn't say, Um, but yes. Uh, I was a big fan of rope play. So I was a rope bunny. And oh, yeah, yes, yeah. Support. 
<laughs> yeah, and I enjoyed that for a very long time. So you you know you'd have safe words when, or you would hold a ball, you know, if you couldn't talk and mm-hmm. drop the ball. So yes, you always when you're doing that kind of play, you got to have safe words. Mm. Uh, I had a safe word. Um, it was fire, uh, and I definitely had to use it a couple times. Um, it was. It was it was around the time when my pleasure threshold was not where I wanted to be at. And it was just like, we need to just go ahead and cut this short a little bit. <laughs> but now I feel like mm, my threshold kind of increased over the uh, last couple of years. So I don't know if I'll be um, saying fire anytime soon. <laughs> well, I also have discussions ahead of time. What are my hard no's? Mm-hmm. Like this, this is, a you know, this... We might discuss, no, that that's a hard no, this is a maybe, or this is a yes. You know, it's very important to have those discussions ahead of time, sometimes during sex when you're trying things. How does that feel? Is that okay? Do you want more pressure, less pressure? And then you talk about it afterwards, too. What was that like for you? How can we improve? Do you want to do that again? You know, this is how your sex life gets stronger consistently is when you're trying new things you have to talk about them before during and after yes i agree i agree so with that message is there anything else that you would like to share with the audience for our closes out well if i could tell them i am my website is a confidential conversation.com i have a free love your libido book that they can download i have a free love self-assessment quiz you can take and I am working on a couple's massage video so couples can learn how to massage each other in the privacy of their own home including the vulva and the penis so that's my next project and I'm looking forward to it because uh, I will definitely (laughs) is this going to be for sale so I know how much I can have to sell it okay (laughs) so uh, I will be in touch so I can make sure I make my purchase because there's some massaging that I'm planning on doing (laughs) okay good 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 (laughs) in in either the near or distant future but there will be some massaging going on Uh, (laughs) (laughs) yeah I want the project done by summer so in the next couple of months love it love it thank you thank you so much for coming out to the podcast and i appreciate you and love you so much you too vernon thank you of course to the listeners out there thank you all so much for listening to the holy liquid podcast where we step out and speak on sexuality and just in case no one else told you this today you are beautiful you are worthy of happiness and joy you are enough and then some you may not live up to the expectations of others but that is okay you are only required to walk in your own shoes may each day you live lead you towards abundance with that said love you all and see you next episode bye thank you for listening to the holiloquy podcast where we step out and speak on sexuality you can subscribe to the podcast through your favorite podcasting app and find us on the web at www.holiloquy.com that's www.h-e-a-u-x-l-i-l-o-q-u-y.com share the podcast with your friends and join the conversation